Welcome to Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union. Managing your finances during a crisis. Evergreen Credit Union has seven professionals on their financial education team. During this period of uncertainty, they've made their financial education programs available to anyone virtually. No matter what each of us are going through, managing finances in a crisis is new to all of us. It's a good idea to stop and to take some time to plan how you will spend your money over the next several months. This week, we'll be discussing debt. Living with debt may seem normal these days, but the damage debt can have on our lives is far from okay. We'll talk about ways that debt changes your life before, during, and after you pay off your debt. But first, a little bit about Evergreen Credit Union. Evergreen Credit Union also dedicates time and resources toward annual partnerships with organizations that have a larger impact on the entire region. We do so to benefit all those who live or work in the communities we serve. We proudly partner with and support the local organizations listed here. If you're concerned about how to manage your debt, you're not alone. A recent study conducted by Capital One found 77% of Americans recently reported that they are worried about their financial situation. If you're not keeping track of your money, knowing what's coming in, what's going out, chances are you may have created some credit card debt, along with your mortgage, auto loans, and so on, your credit card debt may have risen to a point that has you concerned. Debt, good debt, bad debt, and what to do if you have too much debt. We'll go over some tips that may help you get a better handle on managing debt and working towards being debt-free. Yep, you heard me, debt-free. Financial freedom won't happen overnight. It's a well-planned goal you work at in various stages. It all starts with establishing a budget, living within your means, and paying yourself first. Establishing that $1,000 emergency fund is critically important. Don't assume more debt than you can manage comfortably. Continue building your savings. The more you have saved, Financial stress won't be part of your life. Achieving a degree of financial freedom allows you to live a life that is fulfilling for you. When you're in debt, your money is spent even before you get paid. Every dollar borrowed today is a dollar less to spend from your next paycheck. So knowing how much debt you can manage is crucial. Here's just a few reasons why managing your debt is so important. A little debt won't hurt you, will it? Debt can be very difficult to talk about, especially with those closest to you. However, have a discussion about when and how to use credit cards. A good rule of thumb is don't charge anything you can't pay for when the bill is due. Remember, keep credit card balances under that 30% utilization threshold. This should always be a deciding factor as to whether to charge it or wait and save for it. The one thing that is sure to keep Americans up at night is debt. No, not that lumpy mattress. Reality is, debt could be hurting more than just their wallets. Research has shown Americans who experience debt are impacting their health. There is no question. Studies have proven financial stress will adversely affect your creativity and your productivity in the workplace. If you're struggling to make payments towards your debt, 
You may fear eviction or foreclosure on your home, bankruptcy, your utilities getting shut off, or debts going into collection. You may also fear losing your job or some other unexpected twist such as your car breaking down is going to destroy you financially. Debt can put a stress on your relationship. Yes, love is blind, but money problems can be a real eye-opener for any couple. Few relationships are founded on a full financial disclosure. Couples must be committed to being open about their finances and make better informed decisions about how they'll manage their finances together. Unsure of how to start paying down your debt? Let's look at some ways that can help you manage your debt. First, stop creating new debt. Create a budget. Even when you're focused on paying off debt, don't forget how important a budget is to the overall plan. You want to be certain of your income, your debt payments, and your expenses. Even when you're paying off debt, if you don't have that $1,000 emergency fund, be sure to put away anything you can toward establishing that fund. Make a list of all your debt. We have a worksheet attached below. If you take the time to complete this creditor worksheet, you'll be able to manage your debt, identify which debt you're gonna pay off first, and come up with a plan to be debt free. First, list all your debt individually. Next, be sure you have all the account numbers for each. Next, take a look at the interest rate that you're paying for each debt. Write that down. Add the total balance you owe for this debt, the date the payment is due, and your minimum monthly payment. Once you have all your debt listed, determine which debt you're going to pay off first. Focus in on paying one debt off at a time. Any extra money should go to the debt with the highest interest rate. Once you've paid that debt off, take the funds you've used to pay that debt and apply it to the next highest interest rate debt. Attack your debt one at a time. Investing in yourself is one of the best return on investments you can make. Paying yourself first 10% with every paycheck sends a powerful message to you and your world. When you commit to paying yourself first, that will allow you to live your life financially secure. Let's shed some light on paying down some of your debt. Let's start with student loans. If you have multiple student loans, maybe a student loan consolidation loan would be the right thing for you. A direct consolidation loan allows you to combine multiple federal education loans into one loan. The result is a single monthly payment instead of multiple payments. Student loan consolidations can also give you access to additional loan repayment plans and forgiveness programs. Don't forget, when refinancing your student loans, be sure to look for consolidation loans that offer a fixed rate of interest. This will allow you to know exactly what to budget each month. Debt consolidation is a form of debt refinancing that entails taking out one loan to pay off many others. Consolidating debt with a personal loan works best if the rate on the loan is lower than the combined interest rate on your existing debt. When shopping for a consolidation loan, be sure to shop for a loan that will offer you a fixed rate of interest. You know exactly what you have to budget for to pay off that debt each month. Balance transfer cards often have a limited time, zero promotional interest rate that allows you to pay no interest for a specified billing cycle. You may have to pay a small transfer balance fee, although some cards do not charge for this. 
if this is a route you choose, commit to putting as much money as you can towards paying down this debt during the zero interest promotion. Home equity loans. If you're a homeowner with equity in your home, you could borrow against the house and consolidate your debt by using a home equity loan. Interest rates are generally lower on a home equity loan than a personal loan, but you must use your property as collateral to secure the loan. It means if you can't pay back your loan, you could lose your home. All right, now let's look at the pros and cons of debt consolidation, balance transfers, home equity loans. Pros. First, you could reduce your interest rate. Personal loans have lower rates than other kinds of debt. If you qualify for a low interest personal loan and reduce your rate, you'll save your money on your loan repayment. Second, lower your rate. Look for a fixed interest rate so you'll know exactly what your monthly payment will be each month. Third, you could boost your credit score. If you've maxed out your cards, that will hurt your score. Consolidating your debt with a personal loan could help your credit scores if it leads to a lower credit utilization rate and more on-time payments. And now for the cons. First, you might pay a higher rate and end up paying more interest, so you really have to do your homework and make sure it's the best option for you. Second, you could get hit up with some fees. Depending upon your lender, you could owe application fees, origination fees, or prepayment penalties if you pay off your loan early. Be sure to read the fine print when consolidating. Third, you might put your assets at risk. If you're securing a loan with collateral, the lender can take the assets if you don't repay as promised. Fourth, you could end up deeper in debt if you don't change your spending habits. The bottom line is, Consolidating debt with a personal loan can be a great idea if you have a plan to pay it back and get your spending under control so you don't end up deeper in debt. Commit to making your money work for you. When you apply for any loan, the lender will make sure that you can afford it. Doing so involves evaluating the relationship between your debts and your income. Referred to as your DTI, the acronym for debt to income. If your DTI is too high, you could have a hard time getting approved for any loan. All right, take out your calculator and let's figure out what your DTI is. All right, let's begin. First, total up your monthly minimum consumer debt payments. When calculating your DTI, even if you're paying more than the minimum monthly payment, lenders are calculating your DTI with your minimum monthly payment. So let's use that number. Now add up your total monthly gross income. That includes any money that you receive on a regular basis, such as Social Security, additional rent income, a second job, any money you receive monthly, include it to calculate your DTI. Next, divide your debt payments by your monthly gross income. And that's it. That's how you calculate your DTI. Now, let's take a look at your DTI. How does it compare to the percentages below? If your DTI is 20% or less, paying yourself first to a savings or multiple savings accounts is possible. Once your DTI is at 40% and above, there's little money left over to put towards any savings. Is your DTI 
too high? We advise our members, like Billy here, to stay focused. Take the information from this video and attack your DTI by putting a plan together. Consider applying for a consolidation loan. Get your budget together. Determine how much money you can put towards paying off debt. Know this before you apply for any consolidation loan. You'll be more confident and more likely not to add any more debt, but focus on getting out of debt. What if you're denied for a consolidation loan? Here are a few tips that will help you get out of debt. Divide your monthly payments into smaller amounts and pay more often. For example, if you get paid every other week, Every other week, make a payment towards each debt. Ask your lenders to forgive some of your debt or suspend some of your payments with a skip a pay program, for example. This might help you get caught up. Discuss with the lenders a way to lower your payments. And lastly, ask them to waive any late fees. All of these, or a combination thereof, will help you get out of debt faster. How do you know when it's time to file for bankruptcy? There are several reasons why a person would consider declaring bankruptcy. Here are some things to consider. First, do you only pay the minimum payments on your monthly bills? Or are you several months behind on your payments? Do you have bill collectors calling you? Do you rely on credit cards to pay for groceries? Are you living paycheck to paycheck? Before making any decision where bankruptcy is concerned, sit down with a professional financial counselor and let them help you navigate through this complicated process. Then if you choose to, schedule an appointment with a bankruptcy attorney to discuss your particular situation. You want to be certain you understand all of the ramifications of filing for bankruptcy. Managing debt can be stressful. Don't lose hope. On Evergreen Credit Union's website, egcu.org, we offer more help online. Visit our Education Cafe or click on the Contact Us box and send us your contact information. We have seven professionals on our financial education team to help you navigate through your personal finances and develop a plan. We've all gone through some tough financial times at one point or another. Evergreen's Money Matter series can help you to get through it. Stay positive and keep believing things will get better because hope is a motivating force that will keep you moving forward. From everyone at Evergreen Credit Union, I'm Brenda Pollock, and we thank you for watching. Join us next week when we discuss savings, establishing that $1,000 emergency fund, and paying yourself first.